it's amazing to me how gullible that people can continue to be, right? And I guess we're going to stick on the topic of, you know, more bad posts on LinkedIn, right? Because for this being a technical and professional channel, um, I think, like I said before, I think LinkedIn is one of the more, um, one of the more um, professional social networking sites, right? Or at least it was, but it's becoming a a place for more complaints and more, you know, entitlement and stuff like that. And to me, I think if that is the way that you approach um, your career and landing a position, getting experience to continue to excel, then you are going you are going to be heading down a path of destruction and disaster, right? But let's um, let's get into it, right? So. Welcome to another episode of Canon Conversations, hosted by yours truly, Tech Coach Ralph, where we here on this channel, we're engineered to win, right? The only thing that matters to us is the results. We don't, we don't care about, you know, um, we don't care about like how it makes us feel. We just want to win, right? And we ask ourselves a question, right? Um, does this put, does does this put me in a position to win? And if it doesn't, we scrap it. And if it does, we 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 get better at it and we keep going. All right. So that is the, that is the plan. That is the goal um, for today. So we are going to talk about this LinkedIn post where I ask a few of um, some of the people that I'm close with what do they think about it, right? And they were kind of head over heels for it. And you know that shows me that we are always willing to react to these feel good stories so emotionally instead of taking them thinking about them critically and rationally and that is what that is what gets the worst of us right that is what puts us in these positions to get scammed to get fooled to get lied to to um follow people that we probably shouldn't be following because they make us feel good right maybe maybe me maybe it's me right maybe i'm cynical maybe i don't like to feel good who knows right but one thing I like to do is win, right? And when it comes to winning, you have to define what, winning's, what winning means to you. And for me, winning means that we achieve our goals. It might not be on the first time. Like I said, we have to fail forward, right? It might not be the second time. It might, be, it might not be the third time, but we will get it, right? And we just keep pushing. We just keep going. And like nothing matters but the results. So let's get into this LinkedIn post, right? Like I said, I'm not going to share who posted it or none of that stuff, right? We're just going to read it and then we're going and then I'm going to give you the, the I'm going to give you the demographics that I see normally fall for these posts. Right. And then we are going to get into um, the statistics of the post and then my my thoughts and opinion on it. Right. So let's get to it. So this post says, right, <clears throat> I hired her on the spot. Did she have prior industry experience? No. Did she have the exact education requirements? No. Was her background even close to the job description? No. She had life experience and was articulate. And most importantly, she was resourceful, a proven record for of getting things done, sometimes in a non-conventional way. I took a shot on hiring her, also because it just made sense. It turns out she was a star performer. Employers. Give someone a chance to prove themselves. That new hire could turn out to be a superstar. Agree? Question mark. So let's go into these stats real quick, right? So between the thumbs up, the hearts, and the claps, it was one over 1,700 people right who felt this way about this post there was 112 comments which there were actually mixed reviews in the comments and then 143 reposts right so why am i picking on this post right here right tech coach Ralph, don't you believe that everybody should be given a chance even if they have no prior industry experience they do not have the exact educational requirements and the background not even being close to the job descriptions it sounds like three strikes you're out. Well, well, should, should we give them a chance? <clears throat> so, right, I can't say no, right? However, 
as the analytical mind that I have as being a QA engineer for the past 15 years, I can't just accept this, right? I need to know more, right? Like, and, and that's the thing that I try to drill into everyone, especially my QA engineers who are learning, who want to get the, who want to get hired in the position, all that, right? You have to always approach it with an analytical mind. I think every single thing that you do, you have to approach it with an analytical mind. You can't separate it from my work mind, from my feel-good mind, to my personal life mind. No, you have to have the same mindset through and through, right? It has to be through and through. So, and and I ask like the the people that that I, I I pass this on to like, is there anything that you would ask about this? It, it, does does this does this like th- this doesn't raise any red flags? The post itself doesn't raise any red flags. The way that he described the person that they hired doesn't raise any red flags. Any questions that you ask about this? No. You know, people should be given a chance. All this stuff, right? I think we do ourselves a disservice because this makes us feel good, right? So. Let's get into, let, let me let me take a look at the demographics of this post, right? So what do I mean by demographics? Is it a, like a certain race of people? Is it a certain, um, no, that's not what I mean by that, right? When I look at who, who likes this, right? And I scroll down and I'm scrolling down and what do I see? The demographics is a lot of people who are open for work, right? They have the tag open for work and it's probably a lot of people who are not who don't have the tag, but they still are open for work, right? Like they're still looking and they would just wish that somebody would take that same chance on them that they don't have any prior industry. And you know what? They might check some of the, uh, out of the list, they might check some of them, right? So they might not have any prior industry experience, right? Okay. However, maybe they have some educational experience. They might've, they might've did a boot camp. Well, they don't even have the, the necessary educational experience because it might say, oh, you need a bachelor's degree in computer science or whatever the case may be. Um, and you might maybe did a boot camp, maybe did a Udemy course, right? I, I don't think um, I don't think those really affect your chances like that. Um, but, you know, some companies, they might have that requirement, right? But, you know, so, but do you have the, the exact education requirements? Nope, all right? Is your background even close to the job? Maybe you're trying to transition to, to QA, right? Or maybe that um, you're like, you used to be, who knows, God knows what, right? Um, some claims adjuster for an insurance company. And now you want to become a software, a software engineer um, or a, a cloud engineer, whatever the case may be, right? Cybersecurity, you know, that's popular now. Um, but you don't have the, like your background is not even close to the job description. You want to take a chance on you, right? Should you be disqualified, right? Definitely not, Right. But will you get hired on the spot? Hmm, that if maybe if you get the person who made this post, possibly, right? But I don't like to live off possibilities. I am more of a probability type person. So when I when I when I think of probabilities, I have questions. I have questions I need answered, right? Before I can just go off and say, oh yeah, like this makes perfect sense. You know, it, my mind doesn't think like that, right? It has to make sense to me. You know, it has to make sense. I can't, I can't, I can't, I just, I cannot just say, oh yeah, this is how it should be, right? Because I've been doing this for way too long to read a post like this and automatically like, oh yeah, this makes perfect sense. And I believe him and blah, 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 right? No. So when I ask, what are the questions? Like, are there any red flags, any questions that come to mind on, that you, that you would question this, right? And whether you're studying data engineering, whether you're a product owner, a project manager, scrum master, software engineer, Q, especially a QA engineer, a business analyst, right? Business analyst, where you're supposed to analyze this type of stuff. You have to approach this with your analytical mind, right? You should always have an analytical mind. You can't separate it. So what questions come to mind when I read this, right? First and foremost, the first question is, what the hell position did you hire this person for, right? That's what I want to know. 
right? And, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get into why that is my very first question, and why I think the people who say, "Oh no, this is perfectly valid," I don't have any questions for this. Why I think that you are utterly wrong, right? So let's get let's get into this, right? So I, I just wanted to I, I just wanted to um, highlight some of the comments that there were, right? And I, I'm not even going to get into the comment that like, oh, I've seen this same post over and over again in different places by different people, whatever, right? I don't care about that. So here is. Here's a comment, right? So this person says, I wish all hiring managers thought as you did, but sadly, I suspect you are in a very distinct minority. Education is nice as a box to check, but outside of being referred or knowing an, an insider, when it comes to hiring decisions, directly applicable work experience is kind of is the is king of hiring. Unfortunately, indirect life or my preferred term, real world experience counts for for almost nothing for most who hold hiring authority that's not a more a moral judgment just my observation right and here's the thing here's why you're wrong um mr person with an mba right i consider like actually working in the field and maybe you know even doing internships doing freelance projects whatever i consider that real world experience right i don't consider your actual like i, I Actually working in the field is real world experience, right? Regardless of how you work in the field, that is real world experience. Not indirect life experience where it's um from I don't know. I mean no, I mean how how you how you relate the two, right? But I say working in the field is real world experience. Okay. But Here's the thing, right? You wish that all hiring managers thought as, thought as this person did. Here's the problem. Here's the problem with that. <clears throat> the goal of the hiring manager is not to give some random person that they never met a chance. The goal of the hiring manager is to add benefit to the company, period. Add value to the company, period. When you're taking when when you're investing, right? Because hiring somebody is an investment. It's an investment that the company is equipping you with to make on behalf of the company, right? To bring on this person who is supposed to have X, Y, and Z skills, who's supposed to add benefit to the company, right? And there's some there's some grace in there, right? Based, you know, but the goal of hiring is the benefit that it's going to bring to the company. How is this person going to impact the company in a positive way? Right? That's the question that you need to answer. And and as the person who's looking for a job, that's the question that you, as the person who's being interviewed for these positions, need to be able to articulate in your interviews, right? So it's not about wishing that hiring managers thought as this. Hiring managers, like, they might, they might like you, right? They might like you, but you, there, there's, there's, they have a need to fill, right? And they are being looked closely by their superiors, right? The person who made this post, allegedly they're a CEO and managing principal, so they can make these type of decisions, right? But for the most case, hiring managers are not in that position to take these risks, right? It's, it's their neck on the line for the people that they hire. And if, you're, if the person that you're hiring isn't producing in a certain margin of time and ability, then you are held accountable for it, right? And, you know, so if you, conti if you continue to hire, make the wrong hire, that's going to look bad on you. Okay? So, let's push forward a little bit, right? Um, because, you know, I personally don't wish that all hiring managers thought like this. I think that there needs to be a balance. 
in the in in how you approach like there's you have to be able to see something that uh to to have that balance but to hire somebody on the spot where they don't have any they don't have prior industry experience they don't have the educational requirement they don't have a background that's even close to the job they they have nothing and you and you make the claim i hired her on the spot right so i have like other than it being hard to believe i have questions right um but it's possible if you do not actually interact if so like i said the first question was what's the position that this person got hired for right the second question is um how did you find them how did you find this person because here's something that you guys also don't know especially for even small companies but to large companies if you if you follow along on our software explorations right when we're looking for job postings on linkedin you'll see a let's say a um an entry level qa engineering position for instance right um it doesn't pay doesn't pay much right um and especially if it's remote you're going to find there might be like three to four hundred applicants for it. Right? And let's say 90% of those applicants, they don't have prior industry experience. They don't have the exact education requirements. And the background is not even close to the job description. Which one of those which one of those three um three hundred applicants do you hire? Which one of those do you quote unquote take a chance on? Which one do you risk not making potentially any like being a cost negative to the company for who knows how much time? Because when, when somebody gets hired, for the most part, they're going to be a cost negative for a little bit, right? But that's all part of the equation. But how long is too long, right? As they ramp up, as they get to know the company and everything like that. All right. So, like I said, I wanted to know. I wanted to know. Um, how, like, what, you know. Those, those, like those are, those are my questions, right? What's the position? How'd you get in contact with this person? Like, because when applying, right, you have um, for for you know larger size companies, if, if it's not a a company of one person, right, it's going it's gonna be going through. Uh, you're getting tons and tons of resumes, right? It's going through a system, and then it's getting filtered out for uh, the recruiters, like based on a formula and now you have these resumes and now you're looking to see um all right out of those which one close is the most closest that's going to align with the needs of the team the needs of the company so we can we can push forward and we can we can bring them in okay so last week interviewing is super expensive right so now you hired this person on the spot right so let's go to the question of because they're going through the comments somebody asked like so what position did you hire this person for right and the author replies they hired this person to be a staff recruiter for their team right so I'm not too familiar with what a staff recruiter does per se, but it looks like they, let's find out real quick. Let's find out real quick. What is a staff recruiter? Staffing agency recruiters identify and match job candidates with appropriate firms and positions that best fit their backgrounds. Hmm, ironic, isn't it? They build relationships with job seekers to gain a deep understanding of their skills and qualities. 
They also provide a steady flow of workers to client firms. Isn't that ironic? All right, so the post says that he hired somebody who had no prior industry experience. They didn't have the exact educational requirements and their background wasn't even close to the job description. But the position that he hired them for is to is for a staff recruiter who identifies and matches job candidates with appropriate firms and positions that best fit their background. Hmm. How come if this is such a successful model, right, of hiring somebody with no prior industry experience, not the exact education requirements, and the background not even close to the job description, why not make that a business model for companies that you pro- that you staff them with people who have absolutely no relationship to what their to what the company's needs are, right? If if that is such a formula for success that worked for you, if it worked for you, you should be able to um, sell it and expand it across the across, right? So. Let's get into why I think that this is this doesn't make any sense, right? Maybe it makes sense to being a staff recruiter. I don't know. Oh, the other thing I wanted to know, right, is what is like what is the salary that this person was hired with on the spot with no prior industry experience, without the exact education requirements and with the background not even being close to the to the job description, right? What is the salary that they get hired at? As right? Why don't you start them off at the top of the uh, of the salary as well? See, and and here's the thing. Here's the trick, right? I think that companies like they can they can um, based on their needs, right? They can give people a chance to a certain degree, right? As long as they're still getting value out of the person. But here's the thing, because a lot of people nowadays like. They t- like they'll tell me, oh, um, I want this job, but I want it to be remote. I'm like, mm, that's, that's not really up to you to dictate, right? Because when we do when we do our searches on LinkedIn, right, we'll put remote, and the jobs will have like um, the, those remote jobs will have like three hundred to a thousand people applying for it, right? So that's your competition. But when you do the, when you do that same search for um, hybrid or on site. And here's a here's a secret, right? Although a lot of them say on site, they will a lot of them will still give you the the ability to work hybrid, right? So when we do those searches, right, of something that is closer to to your location where you can like make it to the office a couple of times a week or or something like that, right? Especially if for the lower positions where you're trying to get your foot in the door to get to get some experience, right? Those will be like depending on your location, right? For the of course. But you can get like 35 to maybe 75 applicants. You make it a much smaller pool that you of, of competition, right? Because with with those with, where those tons and tons of people are applying, it is going to be hard to get those positions, right? So, like I said, put yourself in the best position to win, All right? Back in the days, we had to go into the office, right? And the the remote jobs, though they're more reserved, they're more reserved for those with more experience, right? Because they do not need to be monitored as closely. They can figure things out a lot easier. But but those who are um, not that as experienced. It, it, it only makes sense that you'll be required to come to the office maybe a couple of times a week, three times a week, maybe. So, because you need the help, right? So, if you say, I want a remote job, cool. But that's not always the case. It's not always what you're going to get, right? So, you have to understand that. You, you, have to be, you have to be practical and you have to be, you have to put yourself in the best position to win gain your experience so as you move up then you have a more of an option to be able to work remotely all right so and now let's get to the example why i say that um the concept of this post while it sounds good makes you feel good right but here's a questioning of it that 
you should really take into consideration. How would you apply this to your own life? Are you willing to take that risk of hiring somebody that has no prior industry experience, who do not, who does not have the exact education requirements, or a background that's even close to the job description, right, in your own life? So, what does that mean? Like, let's give some examples, right? Say you need a lawyer, right? Say you need a lawyer. Are you willing to take a lawyer who has never worked the case? They have no prior industry experience as a lawyer. Are you willing to take a lawyer who didn't pass the bar exam? Who didn't go to law school? Are you willing to take a lawyer that the only the only background they have in law is watching the practice from the 90s, one of my favorite shows, by the way, watching Law and Order, and not even Special Victims Unit, right? Because Special Victims Unit barely dealt with the actual court cases in most of the episodes, right? It was the original Law and Order who would give you the first half of, of the law part, the crime, and then the second half was about the court case. Right? And any other, or maybe you watch um, True TV. Maybe you grew up watching Night Court. Are you willing to hire somebody as your lawyer to defend you, to represent you, to put it better, to represent you in court, who his background was watching TV shows about law. Or maybe they read the law books, right? It is, it, maybe that's an extreme, right? Maybe that's an extreme. How about you need a mechanic? You need a mechanic, right? Are you willing to hire a mechanic to work on your car who has no prior industry experience, right? They've never open uh, the hood of a car before. They've never opened the hood of a car before. Are you willing to have them work on your vehicle? They don't have the education experience, right? Because they didn't go to mechanic school. They didn't do a, an apprenticeship as a mechanic. They don't know anything. Like, they don't even know where the where the oil filter is in the car or the air filter. Right? They don't have the exact education requirements to be a mechanic. Their background of what they know about fixing cars is watching YouTube channels, watching Pimp My Ride, You know, watching shows, what is that, the Motor Trends channel, I think it's called, watching that, seeing how they restore cars and fix cars and stuff like that, that is their, that is their background. That's as much as they know about being a mechanic. Would you hire that person to work on your car? Okay, so maybe that's extreme as well, right? Maybe that's extreme as well. But we can apply the same logic to a doctor, a dentist. What about applying it to a staff recruiter, right? Let's say you have your business, right? And you need to hire people. Would you feel comfortable of hiring a person to staff your business? with a person who never staffed the business before, who never recruited before, 
and their background is in some other random thing. I guess it depends on what your goals are for your business. If your goals are to get 1,766 reactions on a LinkedIn post, I guess so. If it's to get 112 comments on a LinkedIn, on a LinkedIn post, I guess, so, I guess so. If it's to get 143 reposts, I guess so. I guess it depends on what your goals are. If it's actually to win, grow your business, cool. If winning to you is getting lots of likes and reactions on a LinkedIn post, then I guess that's for you as well. So just up to you, all right? So that's how I break that down, right? Like I said, do you have anything against this person um, who allegedly hired this person on the spot without any industry experience, educational requirements, or background that's even close to the job description? I couldn't care less. I'm not working with that person. I'm not the one hiring them. Do whatever you want, right? But my thing is, for, for those who... For those who work with me, at least, right? For those that I train, that I coach, have that analytical mindset, question everything. Question everything, right? I, like, it doesn't matter who is telling me, right? It doesn't matter who is telling me. I question it. I look it up. I do my research. I verify. I get a better understanding. That is what the goal is. All right? Don't fall for it. Don't. Like I said last week, if it makes you feel good, question it. If it makes you feel bad, question it. If it makes you feel neutral, question it. As a QA engineer, I think I said this on a live stream the other day. Question all things. QA tester, question all things. And when you do that, you'll be able to better analyze, better rationalize, make better decisions in your work life, in your personal life, wherever you, whatever it is that you're doing, wherever you go, the key is making better decisions. And I believe that once you put your feelings and your emotions aside and you actually start to process things rationally, that is the key for your success. All right? So, that's that for this week. This has been another episode of Canon Conversations hosted by yours truly, Tech Coach Ralph, where, like I said before, we are engineered to win, right? Nothing matters but the results. So before I leave you, like I said, question all things. And until next time, until next time, this is Tech Coach Ralph signing off. If you enjoyed the fascinating information shared in this video and you want more, be sure to hit the subscribe button to Tech Coach Ralph to be notified for new videos.